What's going on everybody? Mike here with another video and today I want to do my 90 day review of the Surface Pro X. So this has been out probably for about five months now, maybe six months, and there's been a lot of negative reviews on this. So let me tell you what I think. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about on this device is the build quality and of course what ports you have. Now the build on this is fantastic. It is insanely thin, insanely light. I really have zero complaints about the build quality. Microsoft has done a fantastic job of shrinking the bezels down and just the form factor, the lightness of this is just awesome. And the one complaint I have about the build quality is it is made out of aluminum, so it's a, a fingerprint magnet. So obviously this does not come in red, it only comes in one color. I put this on just because of the fingerprints, but I also think it looks nice as well. But going around this thing, you've got only two ports on the left side. You've got two USB Type-C ports, which in a poorly lit room, these are actually kind of hard to see. So right here I've got uh, studio lighting on, so it's really easy to see them, but if you got You've got two USB-C ports. Of course, these are not Thunderbolt ports. Going around the other side, you have a Surface Connect port, and that is it. There is no headphone jack on this. And, of course, you've got the power button, and you've got your volume up and down rockers. But, again, no headphone jack on this, which if that's a deal breaker for you, then obviously don't buy it. And then on the back side, you've got your cameras and then on the front, you've got your front-facing cameras, which this does support Windows Hello. Now, one other thing on the build of this is there is no expandable storage. So most Surface devices, underneath the kickstand, they always have a slot here for a micro SD. In this case, it does not have that. However, here on the back, and it's going to be hard to see, is a little port. You just pop a SIM tool pin or a paper clip, and this pops up. And it is very easy to access the storage, access the storage, and you can upgrade this. However, I've not really seen this type of SSD available yet. I guess you can get them on eBay, but personally, I haven't needed to upgrade yet. But I imagine as this device continues to be on the market, more and more third-party uh, folks will make SSDs for this, and they'll be easier to find and locate. But it's super easy to get to. And also under that lid is where you would actually put your SIM card. Now, along with the build quality of this, you might as well talk about the keyboard and pen. Now, the keyboard is an optional, but not really optional accessory, because if you get this without the keyboard, it is severely limited. So I actually have the only one that you can get for this right now. Um, and I bought the pen. So I got the keyboard and the pen bundle. Now the new Surface Pen for this is basically got the carpenter shape, but the cool thing is that it sits in here magnetically and it will actually charge. So that is pretty cool. And when you don't need it, you can't see it and it's out of the way and it makes it far more difficult to lose this than the previous Surface Pens, which if you do have, those will work with this. Now the keyboard itself has a fairly large glass trackpad and it's, again, Alcantara fabric, so it's very comfortable, um, fairly easy to clean, just have a damp rag. And this does have backlit keys as well, and the key travel on these is really nice. So typing on this is excellent. So if you've used any other Surface device, it's fairly similar unless you've got a very old Surface. But typing on this is great, great travel, no complaints whatsoever. All right, so let's move on to the specifications of this thing. Now this comes in various configurations. You can get it with 8 gigs of RAM or 16. You can also get it with a 128 gigabytes of storage, which is the base model. And that's actually what I have here. And then this will go all the way up to 512 gigabytes. So obviously the more RAM you get, the more storage you get, the more the price is going to go up, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now inside of this thing is Microsoft's own custom SQ1 chip. And again, it is an ARM chip. So you got to keep that in mind when you buy this. With ARM, there are some limitations. However, even though it's an ARM chip, the processor will go up to 3 gigahertz. So um, the performance is really, really good with that chip. Now continuing on with the specifications, again, one awesome thing about this, and the reason I bought this 
over the Surface Pro 7 is this has built-in LTE. Now it's 4G, it would be nice if it was 5G, but so far the performance has been excellent. All I did was take the SIM card out of my tablet that I have on T-Mobile, popped it in, no configuration whatsoever, it works. So uh, no complaints with that. LTE is really good on this. All right, so along with the specs, the screen on this thing is a 13 inch touch display, just like all surfaces. Hi, cat. <laughs> Yeah, what are you doing? So again, this is acting like Dr. Evil here. The screen on this is a 13 inch touch display. It's full HD. It's 2080, 2880 by 1920 resolution with 267 PPI. So it's a three by two aspect ratio, which I really like. It's nice for watching movies. All right, so the cameras on this thing, the rear camera is an 11 megapixel. This will actually shoot 4K video um, at 30 frames a second, so I'll throw a couple samples of that. It takes really good pictures for a tablet, and also it shoots pretty good video. So front-facing camera, again, supports Windows Hello. It works extremely fast, it's extremely accurate, and it is a very clear, crisp camera, and it is 5 megapixels. So I'll try and get some video samples of both cameras, but needless to say, for what it is, they're really good cameras. All right, this is showing the front-facing camera. Works awesome, as you can see. No complaints, and the microphone itself is actually pretty good also. And that's pretty much the specs on this thing. So let's real quick talk about the price. So that's kind of the biggest complaint, especially with all the reviews of this thing. And if you put this in perspective, this comes with LTE. So a lot of folks want to compare this to an iPad, which to me, that's kind of not the best comparison, but if you get a 12.9 inch iPad, you get the LTE model, you get the smart keyboard and the Apple Pencil, and this is actually cheaper. So, so what I paid for this thing was $11.21. Now I got this on sale at the Microsoft Store, which if you keep checking, at least every other month this thing is on sale. So I got it for $200 off. And if you happen to be a student or a military or military veteran, then you can also save 10% on this. So for um, some pretty good prices. So again, for this configuration, which is the 128 gigabyte model, I got the uh, actual pen keyboard device for 1121. So to me, I think it's a good bargain, um, especially with the LTE uh, always connected. So to me, that makes it totally worth it. All right, so now I just kind of want to talk about my experience with this as a user. I'm going to talk about some good things and then some bad things. But so starting with the good build quality, it is extremely thin, extremely light. I mean, it's just really blows my mind how thin this is. And it just, um, I think it's around two pounds. I'd, I'll have to Google to see the exact weight. But needless to say, this is a light device, especially for what you can do with it. Another benefit is the LTE being always connected. Um, obviously, everybody's on lockdown, quarantine right now, so um, you're probably not going to be going out much. But once all this crap blows over, um, you'll be able to leave your houses. And this thing is awesome for someone who likes to travel a lot or is on the road. All right, so real quick, let's talk about probably the most important aspect of this device and its performance. So like I mentioned, it is an ARM chip, but don't let that scare you off. Now, all that really means is there will be some programs like older legacy 32-bit programs that may or may not run and some 64-bit programs that possibly might not run if it's an older program or they just haven't updated it to run on the ARM architecture. But generally, like I said, this is a 64-bit ARM device, so 
I personally have not encountered any programs that I have not been able to install on this. Now, if you go through the Windows Store, pretty much anything in there that shows, you'll be able to install. So if it doesn't show up in the Windows Store, then you're not going to be able to install it on this device. But like I said, the performance has been fantastic. And one of those reasons is because of Microsoft Edge. I recently switched from Google Chrome. I've been a Google Chrome user for, for years now, to be honest with you. But with the new Edge, it's essentially Chrome underneath, but it runs way more efficiently. It's not as resource intensive, so you're not burning up all your RAM just to run your web browser. Microsoft has done a fantastic job optimizing it for this device. And that is the web apps. So with this, pretty much any website you go to, you can actually pin and use as an app. And I'll try and show you a couple demos of that. But I've pretty much got all of my Google apps that I like to use as far as OneDrive, Google Photos. I've got them all installed on here as an app. And when you do that, it essentially just allows you to open it in a separate window. And it's its own little app. It looks like an app. It functions like an app. And it's very convenient and just light as far as the resources on your computer. And that brings me to one of the main things I like about this is the ability to use it as a tablet. And having those web, app, web apps help substantially with that. So this thing is extremely comfortable to hold in the hand. Um, I mean, it's as light as a tablet. It's actually lighter in a smaller footprint than my 12.9 inch iPad Pro that I have. And that's, of course, the second generation one, so it's not quite as light as the newer ones. But really, there's no issue holding this for long periods of time. It's comfortable. Um, the touch interface works great. So using this as a tablet is one of the primary benefits of having a Surface Pro device, specifically Surface Pro X. Now, along with that performance that I talked about, I use this thing is my only PC. So I've got the Microsoft proprietary proprietary uh, Windows dock or whatever you call it, Surface dock. And it uses the Surface Connect port. And I'm always driving a second monitor with this. And I've experienced zero slowdown, uh, zero lag, zero performance issues with that. So I routinely run a second screen with this. I use a mouse and no issues whatsoever. And you don't even need the proprietary uh, surface dock. You can actually just use any USB-C dock and boom, you can run your second monitor. This thing will actually power two 4K displays at 60 hertz without an issue. So if you're worried about performance, don't worry about it. But obviously, if you are a hardcore gamer or video photo editor, then you shouldn't be looking at this device for that. If you do, then you're an idiot. So um, this is meant to be a secondary device. All right, so finally wrapping up my performance with the good stuff, or my experience with the good stuff, and that's battery. So the battery life on this, to me, has been pretty good. It's still not as good as some ARM devices, but that's what you're going to sacrifice when you get this ridiculously thin chassis is you got to have a smaller battery. But in my use case, I'm getting between six and eight hours of use. So again, it's going to depend on what you're doing, but this should no problem be able to get you through a work day. So if you're just doing uh, web surfing, uh, Microsoft Office, then you're definitely going to get about eight hours on this. So don't worry there. So to put it in perspective, uh, Surface Pro 7, this will get about 20% more battery life. So really, I've had no issues with battery whatsoever. So I think the battery is pretty good. It could be better. So hopefully the next generation, we're able to get the claimed, you know, whatever, 12 hours, 13 hours of battery life, but really you're looking between six and eight and probably closer to eight, depending on what you're trying to do. So again, don't be scared off by the battery life. All right. So this brings me to the negative parts of the experience that I've had with this thing. And something I already mentioned is fingerprints. So again, I put a skin on here, not required, but this thing is just a fingerprint magnet. So just expect that. Not a big deal, but I'm just kind of OCD like that. I don't like having a lot of fingerprints on it, so I put a skin on it. The other thing that I look at as a negative is you've only got one color option. So if you look at the Surface Laptop line, Microsoft's got some pretty cool colors. You can get the cobalt blue, the silver, and the burgundy for an older color. 
Um, so to me, the black is nice, but again, it would be nice to have some of those extra color options for this. All right, the next negative I see on this device is the expandable storage. So again, every Surface device previous to this has always had a slot where you can add a micro SD and just get some cheap, easy, expandable storage. Now you can upgrade the hard drive on this, like I mentioned, but it's not a very common hard drive, so it's kind of hard to find. So it would be nice in the next iteration if they bring back the micro SD card slot. One of the other negatives, like I talked about, it's not been an issue for me, but it may be for you, is that with this being an ARM chip, it's not going to run all of your native apps as far as some of your older Windows 32-bit programs. So again, you're going to have to kind of check the compatibility and see before you invest in this device. But for me, everything that I've wanted to do, I've been able to do on it. All right, so finally, let's wrap this up. Like I said, I've had this for about 90 days now. It's been my one and only PC, and I've used it also as my primary tablet. So as you can see, I've got an iPad Pro sent back there, and literally the only thing I use that for is editing video because of LumaFusion. So that's the one and only reason I use that. Other than that, I use this for everything else. When I'm sitting on the couch, I want to use a tablet. I just pop the keyboard off and I use this. And when I want to use a desktop, I plug it into the Surface Dock and I use it as a desktop. Again, like I mentioned, if you are a gamer or someone that wants to edit videos, um, then this device is not for you. So, again, people give this a negative uh, review or rap because they can't do those things. But, again, that's not what this device is for. It's not who it's geared for. So, um, if you buy this expecting it to be able to game or edit video, then, again, um, you're an idiot. Like I mentioned, this is cheaper than an iPad Pro with all the accessories, so people like to compare it with that. But again, you got to take into consideration that this is also a full PC. It runs Windows, and this has built-in LTE from the get-go. So with that, this was just kind of a quick down and dirty review of this thing. Like I said, I've had it for 90 days, and without hesitation, I can definitely recommend this device. Just if you are a student or your military or you prior military, um, there is a 10% discount if you get it off of the Microsoft website. And also, at least once a quarter, these things go on sale anywhere from $150 to $200 off. So look for it on sale. Don't pay full price. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit that like button. And if you've not subscribed, go ahead and do so. Thanks.